the weirdest thing. It's like yeah. they just, it's like usually chaos, they, you know, they'll separate and do their own thing. They okay, hang right. out off after school yeah. all the time. I would say it's not Gossip Girl West. Uh, one of the things we're doing is we're really focusing on this core family moving from Kansas and coming into Los Angeles. There are Gossip Girl elements in that there is it's a wealthy enclave, there's a lot of rich people with a lot of opportunities, but we're really focusing on this family and how they try to keep their moral center in this crazy rich world. We do pay people. attention to the old, but we also have a bunch of people you know, on staff that are experts, and we also have some secret weapons around, around the country that are just absolutely die hard. You know, every episode, every time. Every tell you everything, but another one of the, I will say from watching it, because we didn't watch it when it was on, watching it and looking back, the one thing that really, you know, we should all be so lucky to have characters that 18 years later people still Right, and that's a big hit. So that's and the biggest compliment I can give. That's an amazing thing to do as a writer. We are also, though, watching it and seeing there really was this core family, you know, group of friends that people really responded to. And I think that's a really interesting thing, which goes back to why it's not necessarily going to be like some of the teen shows. It may start out looking like they're, everyone's against each other, but eventually you're going to find that there's going to be this great family together. When we bring in those sort of contemporary issues of what kids are dealing with, we will arc them out over multiple episodes. And what we like to do is identify a problem and then sort of see the cause of what led the kid to that behavior, what led the parent to that behavior. So we will, you got to touch on what kids are going through, but ultimately uh, it's not going to be like one and done and they never have the issue again. I knew nothing about her. I really didn't. And I just knew stories. So I was, I didn't know if that dinner was going to last one second or if it was going to be like I got there and they go, what are you and who are you? And, and, and we just sort of talked for hours and hours and just about, you know, what it was like back then and sort of, you know, we didn't really talk about the new show to the last 20 minutes of like a three and a half hour dinner. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot about her and she was, you know, enthusiastic and wants to be creative. And, you know, she was a kid. So it's, it's interesting to see, you know, this person grow up, grow up in the business like that. She had done Heather's and she had done, you know, Little House on the Prairie and she had been a working actress when she started the show. And you never know the other environment. Like you talk about producers that were there is like, you know, we don't know how volatile or how those people, you know, influence behavior. So on our sets, we have a very different atmosphere. It's sort of a calmer place to work. No one's yelling. And, you know, it's interesting, you know, to hear, you know, what it was like back then. And I think she's coming into a completely different environment. If we can, again, organically put them in the show, it would be great. I don't know what they're you know, thinking, I don't know if, um, you know, the interesting thing, I, I can never put myself in their place. It's like, you've done the show, it was a huge hit, huge media, you know, craziness. And then when the new one starts, do you feel as an actor, you're, oh, here I go again, I'm gonna be that guy again. I don't know if that's their feeling. Um, so hopefully, you know, the thing is when this ad campaign starts, they're going to be those guys again, and people are going to want to know what they're doing. So hopefully, some of them embrace hopefully that. Hopefully, it'll be back to that. If we can get, we would love to have them. And if it can come to the fact that it's not just them as actors, but if they can be interested in what their characters would be doing today, would would be great. And it's not like it'd be a full time job. It would just be like touching in. When I saw this campaign first, I was like, I, I can't. So we feel like it's an opportunity to tell the stories we like to tell, just in a different environment. Is what we're hoping. So you hope that people will see this and sort of find some of that trademark. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. We're putting it in there. We're absolutely putting in there. There's, there's, there's lots of know moments. There's freaks and geeks moments. There's definitely there's humor in the show, and there's definitely uh, real emotion and nothing really over the top. And nothing, you know, just melodrama. Are you like, worried about the notes from the CW saying, can we lose this uh, subtle humor and, and put in more uh, outrageous? You outrageous always get lines. notes with any network Every in any network. studio. It's, a, it's the same sort of. Also, we always say the only networks you like are the ones you haven't worked for. And uh, <laughs> that's pretty much, you know, everyone's trying to help pull. Everyone's trying to give their point of view across. And there's a big pressure and, on the show. I mean, pressure this on is their them. big show. But, but I think, you know, we just finished shooting the pilot and they're very happy with it. And they've, they've been letting us be funny. Nick Harcourt is our music supervisor and uh, he's been amazing and everyone has a real musical ear on the set so it's like we're very conscious of bringing musical acts in and having an awareness in the soundtrack as well they just won't play at the beach pit they you know what they might play at the beach pit and they might play at the pit